Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing and installing a Thermomate two and a half gallon hot water heater uh, tank that goes underneath your sink, either in the kitchen or bathroom. And for full disclosure, Thermomate did send this to me free of charge in exchange for my review. And what we're gonna be doing specifically is that I'm gonna be doing an unboxing and then I will be installing into my downstairs sink. Uh, if you look at one of my previous videos, I did install a Bosch hot water tank a few months back, and we're gonna be replacing that tank with this one. And what I wanted to really focus on is not so much of the installation, because the installation of these are pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The cold water goes in one, one side and the hot water comes out the other with half inch fittings. And that's really pretty straightforward as far as the installation goes. But I wanted to open it up before I even put water in it take a look at the construction and how you would maintain it in the event that you would have to go and clean out the tank over time. I mean, sediment does build up. You also want to have to replace that, uh, what's called the sacrificial anode rod in order to keep the tank from corroding away too quickly. Now, depending on where you live, your water table may be more higher mineral content or softer, less minerals, and that's going to determine how often you should be flushing this out. It is recommended that you flush out these tanks, these little uh, point of use tanks about once a year, sometimes quicker, depending on, again, your water table. Uh, this has got quite a bit of, well, let's open it up. Let's check it out. Let's do this. First unboxing, let's see what we get. Very well packaged, got our instruction manual. Let's just rip into it. Save the instructions. Pretty small, this is the two and a half gallon. Let's see, what's this on top? So what they do is they give you, so these are all plugged off, but up here, let's see, there's actually more stuff in the box there. All right, so they give you a little bit more here. And we'll start off with the hardware. It looks like this is the hanging bracket. So this is something that you can actually hang up on the wall in the back here. It's got a claw type of, you can see that there. They give you some mounting bolts. They give you some lag bolts, depending on how you want to uh, mount it to the wall. Sometimes you can do it on drywall. And then they have these large uh, wood screws, lag bolts to go into it. You have to find a stud. And then you would mount it here and it will actually lock into place here and it can hang on the wall if you were short on room or space if you couldn't put it on the floor or anything like that now up here they give you this which i believe is the pressure relief valve yes so now what they have not installed yet and it's well there's a plug right here in the middle this is for your overpressure safety valve. If it's over 210 degrees Fahrenheit or if it reaches up to over 150 PSI or pounds, of, uh, pounds per square inch, this will safely discharge the excess water to bring the pressure down. But what I wanted to do next is the maintenance. Here on the front panel, we're gonna take off the front panel to go and drain this out. You wanna be able to uh, take out the heating element and also inspect the sacrificial anode rod. We're gonna see where that is on this unit and see how we can do our typical maintenance for it. All right, here we are on the front of the unit. So in order to service anything inside the unit, we have to remove this front plate here. And what you have to do is you're using a utility knife or a pocket knife in this case, there's these two little rubber grommets that hide two small Phillips head screws that we'll go ahead and remove. So over here, this is going to release like this. And let's, don't want to lose those screws. Now it's going to expose all the control pieces over here. And over here is your heating element. You have your earth ground and you have your two leads. You have your thermostat and then you have your high temperature shutoff here. So once this, this is to shut it off in the event that it gets too hot. 
we're just going to move these out of the way. Now, we want to go and take the heating element out in order to review what's inside. And you do have to do this periodically in order to inspect not only the heating element, but also the anode rod that is here mounted on top of this heating element plate. So to remove this, it looks to be 10 millimeter nuts to remove this. And now there is a rubber seal around here. You want to be careful of that. But there's one, two, three, four, five. So there's five screws. Let's remove those. We'll pull the element out and I'll show you how you can inspect the heating element and also the anode rod. All right, now that we got the bolts removed, we're gonna just take it out and inspect it. And it should be pretty straightforward to do. Just wanna be careful. Oh, wow, that's actually a much bigger heating element than I in my old one. So this is a pretty significant size heating element. So I'm assuming that the recovery on this uh, tank is gonna be fairly quick compared to others. That's actually pretty good because this element goes in and then it loops down and around comes back up so the more space that the, the more surface area you have is this this part of the metal here this heating element gets hot and that's going to heat up the water now up here right here is your sacrificial anode rod this is what you need to look at and over time this will start to corrode and be eaten away but that's okay that's what we want this rod to do we want this rod to go and get corroded and worn away first before it starts eating the tank in it's inside there the what's happening inside the tank when you have an electric hot water tank and pretty much any hot water tank is you have electrical currents eddy currents uh, electrolysis is happening it's pulling electrons away from the steel and we don't want that to happen if with the steel tank instead we want something to be we want that electrolysis to happen with the softer metal like this magnesium anode rod we want the corrosion and electrolysis to happen to that and not the tank inside. So that's the reason why we have these here. Now, these are standard size. You can find them on Amazon and they are just screwed in here. It's actually, you need a, there's actually a, a I don't know if you can see it here, but you can put a large uh, flathead screwdriver to basically twist this off. It's held in by some threads on the end, end here. And they're not that expensive. Uh, they're pretty standardized. It, it depend, again, depending on your water table, it's it may need to be replaced once a year. could be every other year. But they do need to be inspected at least once a year. Uh, if you see my last video, the last when I didn't check on my hot water tank for six years, there was nothing left and the, and the tank started leaking. So we don't want that to happen either. Uh, but this is what you need to do in order to make sure that your tank is in the most optimal operating condition. Well, I think we've seen enough inside. Let's put it back together. Now these bolts are lag bolts, so they're not gonna fall back into the tank or anything like that. They are locked into place, even though they seem like they're loose. What we wanna do is once you, if you have to replace your anode rod, just give it, give it a good tighten, don't over tighten it. I did wind up getting a 10 millimeter socket with a wrench, with a ratchet wrench here. And you want to go into a crisscross pattern. So one, two, three, four, five, back and forth. And once you get them to be nice and snug, that's it. You're done. You don't need to over torque these things down because what will wind up happening is you'll squeeze out this rubber seal and then you can eventually develop leaks. So we don't want that. So just a nice, it's got to be snug, but not overly tight. And then... This is all set, ready to go. And then the procedure to put everything back, we'll just, just tuck the wires back in there, make sure everything is good to go. And there's this tab right here on the other side. It'll go into this slot here. And now I should be able to get this all back into place.
everything's put back together and what we're going to do now as a pre-work before we go and install it is we're going to go and install that pressure relief valve all right we're going to go and install this overpressure device now it does come with some teflon tape already on there i'm just going to add a little bit more murphy's law sake And here we are down in the bathroom on the main floor. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the thermal mate and swap it in, uh, replacing this Bosch unit that I installed about uh, eight months ago. Swapped out the tank. All I had to do was use the half inch fitting from the existing setup here. So the hot water line goes into the cold intake and then the output, the hot side, goes up to the spigot on the sink. And what we're gonna do is, since this is empty, we cannot turn it on. Make sure that your thermostat is off. When I turn on the water, it's probably gonna make a bit of a bumping sound because there's no water in there. But once I open it up all the way, we should be all set to go. And what we can do is that we can take off the aerator, make sure there's no stuff in there. We wanna first open up the valve and then we'll turn it on to bleed the air out. There we go. It'll take a second to fill up. You can feel the air coming out. I'm just putting this in my hand here so it doesn't splash me. check for leaks all right after inspecting it we don't have any leaks here at the cold or the hot output here everything is all nice and dry we're good to go everything even when we took off the front panel to look at the anode rod and the heating element there's no water this has been sitting for about uh, five minutes off camera so what we did was we plugged in and now we will turn this on there's already hot water in there so it may not turn on immediately but if I wanted to set it to 225 degrees, it would turn on. And if I go a little bit hotter, then it will turn on the heating element. But I'm not going to go that hot. I usually, I think my hot water heater downstairs is set for 135. So I'll just leave it at 125. I don't want it to be too hot. And now... That's a perfect temperature, just slightly hotter than you would need. You can always mix it a little bit. And now we have hot water on demand. We're going to take a temperature reading. Looks like it's a little low. I did set it a little bit less than 125, so it's pretty close. But that's plenty hot for washing your hands. So I am happy with that. Well, everyone, I'm going to end this review video here. I will definitely check back in about six months because I want to see how the heating element and the, especially that anode, sacrificial anode rod is faring. I seem to have pretty high mineral content water where I live, so that could prematurely age out that anode rod pretty quickly. But check back in six months and we'll see how well this is operating. And if there's any updates, I'll certainly update before then. But thank you so much for watching, guys, and for supporting the channel. And we'll catch you on the next project. Take care.